Laura Miller was formerly director of online engagement at the White House during President Obama's presidency. Ah, remember the good old days when everything made sense. 44, won't you come back, please? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Laura Miller. Hello, everyone. Um, obviously, this is uh, after Elian's talk. Uh, this is a nice look back memory lane right now. So um, I hope to share with you some lessons learned from my time at the White House. Um, I'm Laura Miller. Uh, I'm the former director of online engagement at the White House in the Obama administration. And uh, today, I want to talk about uh, actually one of the points Elian brought up as well, which is um, using storytelling to really humanize uh, issues. And um, I come from the D Office of Digital Strategy at the White House. We were a team of about 15 people. Um, and my particular role was really to uh, lead the uh, social team uh, and make sure not only are the, are the trains running on time but, and being a content creator but, uh, and curator, but was also to uh, what I like to say, manage the balance between the vegetables and the candy. Um, now, when you work in government or uh, if you work, you know, particularly on issues uh, versus some type of product, um, what you're really trying to do is make sure that you have those more, you know, viral moments uh, that people are really enjoying, enjoying watching, like when President Obama and the First Lady uh, danced with uh, stormtroopers at the White House. Um, but then also matching that, you know, when the president was giving a counterterrorism speech and making sure that they were getting the information that they needed to hear uh, from, the, from the White House. It is the people's house, and that's who, as public servants, that's who we were serving. Um, so, uh, one of our major goals then was connecting people with purpose, and that was always where we were trying to go. Uh, you know, whether that was uh, focusing on an issue like overtime or talking about the opioid epidemic that's currently happening in the United States. We constantly were trying to engage people at a level where they would actually go back into their communities and feel like they could take something online, offline, and make a difference in their own communities. Uh, now, I guess this is actually the vegetable slide of my presentation. I come from a family of teachers, so this is something that I really wanted uh, to hit, uh, hit on the head again. I know some of you, uh, some of the other pre presenters have also brought some of these questions up, but uh, you know, when you're running social, no matter uh, how large the team, how large your brand, or how big the campaign, it's important to remember these things, you know? What is your message? It's, it's such a simple question, uh, but I, I think sometimes people just jump right into the tactics uh, or want to create that really sharp, you know, video. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that question. Uh, what's your goal? Who's your audience? And more importantly, how do you want them to feel after watching that video or after reading that post? Um, and then, uh, where are they now? Not only does that mean what social platform are you going to and how are folks there engaging with the content, um, but also, are there other, there's so many niche online audiences nowadays and so many niche uh, blogger platforms and uh, it was just talking to the guys uh, at Al Jazeera, you know, AJ Plus is obviously a new more niche channel uh, in the United States uh, that's really taking off. So how can you work with online niche audiences like that to really get your message across? Now, uh, to, to that last point, uh, another kind of slogan that we always talked about in our office was meeting people where they are. Uh, going to them. Obviously, the White House and uh, the President, First Lady, all of our accounts had uh, their own audiences. But there's also those people who you're trying to reach on messages that, uh, you know, uh, our audiences may already know, may already be aware of. But you're trying to reach a new audience. Uh, and a great example of that is actually this right here. Um, this was toward, we had an announcement towards the the end, uh, closer to the end of the Obama administration when the campaign was really taking over the, the news cycle. Uh, but this was something that was very important. It's when the president uh, signed an executive order to uh, protect 100, 115 million acres of Arctic land and water. 
Now, this was a particularly important issue for us, obviously, climate change, um, you know, making sure that uh, our land, water, and wildlife were being protected. So we actually turned to Instagram, and I think Jan talked a little bit about this this morning, as Instagram is becoming a place where celebrities uh, by far are getting the most engagement. And so we kind of did exactly that. We went to um, photographers, uh, uh, Paul Nicklin's actually a National Geographic photographer uh, who has over three million followers. And uh, we went to him and a few other people, uh, other photographers, to post their own photos of the Arctic, but then also share our message. So. A, we're getting uh, over 3.2 million people who could potentially see our post. Um, but also, this is someone that they're, that's not the government, it's not the White House, they might not even really care about politics. But they're following him for a reason. Um, he's also someone who, who openly very much shares uh, being an environmentalist, um, talking about climate change. So we knew that this was the audience that we wanted to hit. So instead of just pushing it out on our channel directly, uh, we did it this way, um, which to, proved to be very successful. But not only that, he's also a very trusted person to this audience. Um, you know, they chose to follow him. So uh, we're also getting a, a different and new tr uh, authenticity uh, that goes along with it. So that brings me to humanizing the issue with stories. and. Uh, this is something we did quite often at the White House. Um, obviously, there were, there were certain issues we had to talk about all the time that kept coming back up, and, uh, and you had to find different ways of telling that story. Uh, for example, the Affordable Care Act and uh, health care in the United States. That was something that every single time we had to you know, re-up it and, uh, when the marketplace would open back, would open back up uh, and people needed to sign up for health care, um, we had to find new ways to talk about it. So. Humanizing the issue of stories was also uh, something where we always had to find a new and authentic voice to help us tell that story. So you may ask, uh, and, and for some of you, you may have the same problem, but where do you get these people? Where do you get the stories? Uh, sometimes that is the hardest part, is finding uh, the, the right and perfect story. Luckily, um, you know, uh, the, this is something President Obama very deeply cared about. Uh, he actually, um, he read uh, 10 letters a day, and, um, you know, obviously it's the White House. He, for, for decades, uh, presidents have been receiving incoming messages. Um, I'm sure it's changed over the years. Uh, actually, uh, towards the end, we also launched a Facebook bot um, that allowed people to, instead of just emailing it, they could actually respond via bot um, and get a response that way. Um, but here's a great example of a letter that we pushed out um, over, I believe it was uh, Women's Equality Day. And um, <laughs> this was a little girl who had written to the president, Delaney, um, where she was telling the president that two boys in her neighborhood told her that uh, girls cannot change the world. Um, so uh, we went ahead and you know, found this letter, uh, found the president's response to her, and um, posted that online. Um, posted it on actually Medium in particular, but also used that and paired that with traditional press uh, to make sure that, um, you know, more traditional outlets also had access to the letter. Um, but obviously the president's telling her that girls indeed can change the world. So this was, this is one of my favorites. Um, so another way of doing this um, is taking, I always like to talk about offline and bringing it online and then offline again. Um, these were parents uh, who, had, uh, who had lost a child to, um, to addiction. And um, this was a very big uh, issue that we especially talked about in the, in the final year of the presidency. And um, they obviously had extremely powerful stories uh, and we decided to actually bring them to the White House uh, to sit down and talk about how they could further take action or do more in their communities. So not only were they writing the president uh, to begin with, we then put them online to share their story with more people. I guess a very Humans of New York-esque uh, type of feel, the Instagram posts if, you, if any of you have follow them. Um, but, uh, and then actually, giving them the tools while they're there to go back and take action and, and have a bigger 
a bigger uh, drive to do something more when they get home. Um, so here's another great example. Um, Facebook Live is obviously something that we really engaged with, um, and it really took off. It was definitely one of our most breakthrough um, tools that we had in our toolbox. Um, this was one of the, the f one of the initial times that we used it, and this was a really special one uh, because it showed the perspective of the president walking into the room in real time. Um, of a group of men and women who had been commuted, and those are men and women who had, uh, were supposed to serve a lifetime sentence for mostly nonviolent uh, offenses, and now they were, they were free. Um, so President Obama uh, was trying to make a point, uh, obviously, to help the, um, to take action on criminal justice reform. And so this was just, instead of you know, putting out that fact sheet and, uh, and talking about that, and those things did happen, this was a way for people to actually put a face to what is going on. These are real people. Uh, and whether you agree with it or not, um, it's clearly changing lives. And uh, as I was saying, it's, it's giving you some type of emotional pull to connect to. Um, so just really quickly about Facebook Live. I hope a lot of you have already been able to engage with it. Um, it I truly love it. Uh, not only uh, does it uh, give you some extra, you know, Facebook's algorithm allows you to uh, give it some extra juice uh, and, and put that notification uh, to, all, to your audience, but it also allows you to do multi-streaming, and I don't know if any of you have tried this yet, but actually sharing it from your page, but also partnering with someone else where it can be shared from both pages at the same time. Um, I know that um, MTV actually did this with the First Lady's College Signing Day, uh, for for uh, those going to college and actually stream the same thing from the White House page, but also from MTV. So not only are you getting millions more eyeballs, uh, but you're also having someone, another page share it, uh, the same content, um, and it might be a page that people are more willing and trusted uh, to watch it from. Um, so I really wanna just share a few more examples that were some of my personal favorites. This is the story of Alex. Um, who uh, shared, he's a six-year-old boy, and uh, the president brought his story up at the UN General Assembly. Um, and from the digital perspective, this was our way of bringing uh, a more humanized approach to what was happening uh, with the, with the uh, refugee crisis. Uh, it had already been obviously very politicized around the world, and so this was a get, bringing something that had been talked about over and over uh, but bringing a new face to it. So if you could play that. Oh. Dear President Obama, remember the boy who was picked up by the ambulance in Syria? Can you please go get him and bring him to our home? Park in the driveway or on the street, and we'll be waiting for you guys with flags, flowers, and balloons. We will give him a family, and he will be our brother. Kevin, my little sister, will be collecting butterflies and fireflies for him. In my school, I have a friend from Syria, Omar, and I will introduce him to Omar, and we can all play together. We can invite him to birthday parties, and he will teach us another language. Since he won't bring toys and doesn't have toys, Kevin will share her big blue stripy white bunny, and I will share my bike, and I will teach him how to ride it. I will teach I will him teach him addition, addition and, and subtraction. Those are the words of a six-year-old boy. He teaches us a lot. The, the humanity that a young child can display who hasn't learned to be cynical or suspicious or fearful of other people because of where they're from or how they look or how they pray, we can all learn from Alex. Alex, six years old. Um, so obviously that was extremely powerful and still watching it now, it still gives me some hope. Um, so just another example uh, to show the power of storytelling, but it's to show also that it doesn't always need to be something 
uh, that's very planned. Uh, this was one example, maybe some of you even saw it, uh, it became that popular and even towards the end was considered one of the most popular posts for the White House. Um, so uh, not only that, but it earned a ton of earned media um, across uh, every single uh, channel. So uh, we, I'm just gonna play this really fast too. Virginia McLaurin. Hey! Oh, hey. How are you? Oh, fine. It's oh, it's so nice to see the you. Honest, honest. You want to say hi to Michelle? Yes. Hold on, man. I don't know my wish. She's 106. No, you are not. You are not. Well, you got to slow down. Oh my goodness. Nice. I want to be like you, but I don't want to be like you. Come on. So what's the, what's the secret to, 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 to still dancing at 106? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. We're so happy to have you here. And look at those nails. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Obviously, all of you had, you know, some type of emotion behind that, uh, and that's the whole point. It's just to create some type of emotion in people, uh, and social media is where the rubber hits the road. It's where you're able to just push a button, and it could be seen by millions of people. So there's a lot of power there. And just really quickly, in the, the future of storytelling, uh, when it came to the White House, we actually were able to uh, partner with Felix and Paul, if any of you have heard of them, uh, and Oculus to actually capture the inside of the White House um, and have the president narrate that. And so the future of storytelling, even in government, uh, where you think it'd be very slow, is already moving in that direction. Um, another great example um, here is at Yosemite National Park. It was during um, a hundred, we're celebrating 100 years of the national park system, and um, you literally can take a uh, walk, a hike through the park with the first family. Uh, it's extremely empowering and powerful, um, and obviously something that will allow generations from now to actually know what it was like uh, to have President Obama kind of in your ear and walking in front of you. Um, so, and I'll leave you this photo. Um, so obviously I, I saw a lot of, I had a very great experience when I was at the White House, got to do very cool things, um, helped Meryl Streep uh, take a selfie on Snapchat um, to seeing uh, my hometown team of the Chicago uh, Cubs uh, win the World Series and come to the White House. So there was all these great experiences, but really at the end of the day, what got me up every day and kept me going were the people that we were serving and being able to have this platform and give those who felt somewhat voiceless a higher platform to share their story from and in return encourage others to actually go out into the communities and take action. So I hope this was a little bit of a lighter note for you to, to end on here, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs>